Recently, Netflix released two specials on their service, Rocco's Modern Life Static Cling, and An Invader Zim Enter the Florbis. Is that what it was called? I'm, I'm actually going to need to look that up. I, I'm not doing the, this with a script or anything. This is kind of a just... Yeah. Now, I grew up in the 90s, um, and I loved Rocco's Modern Life. It was a great show. Um, it was crude. It was irreverent. It was... I mean... When people, like, say, oh, you can't make, like, this kind of show today anymore, Bronco's Modern Life would be one of those kind of shows. Oh, baby, oh, baby, oh, baby. Rocco! Mrs. Bighead? I kind of imagine that people who say, oh, things are too politically correct, probably enjoy Rocco's Modern Life. And that's to not, that's not to talk ill of Rocco's Modern Life. Actually, it's a great show. But, you know, it's just one of those, you definitely, it's like, wow, this is a kid's show? What? This is just outrageous. I mean, <laughs> got a really, really big man and his nipples. Just gaze into my nipples of the future, and you'll see that you're wrong. Mm. <laughs> it was 90s. I mean... It wasn't Ren and Stimpy. In fact, it was much better. And yeah, it's just a good little show. And I liked it a lot as a kid. As an adult, it still holds up pretty good, if not better. So when Rocco's Modern Life Static Kling was announced, I was cautiously optimistic. I was excited that there was going to be a new Rocco, but I was also apprehensive because it has been 20 years. Was I disappointed with Static Cling? No, not at all, actually. I felt it was pretty... Well, it was good. Um, something about it. Uh, it is longer than most episodes of Rocker's, Rocker's Modern Life. Like, most 30-minute sessions or two episodes, you know, of 11 minutes each. And my cat is outside my door meowing. And my computer chirped. So, you can only see your tail right now, but I have my Miss Quincy with me. Uh, she is a cat I adopted. She was hanging out at work. Um, and yeah, she's a sweetheart. I've had her for a few months now. Hey, Quincy. Sorry to hold you like that. I just wanted to people to see ya. You don't care, though, do ya? <laughs> um, she has a... Her left eye's a little messed up. Um, Vet doesn't seem too concerned about it, though. Oh, now you want out of the room, don't you? This is weird for her, because I actually don't really keep my door shut. Um, yeah. Anyways, Rocco, um, I forgot the last thing I said. I was, I was very happy with this. Um, oh, I was talking about the length. Okay, most, you know, sessions, the 30 minutes, were two episodes of 11 minutes... So most episodes were 11 minutes. This is 45 minutes. This is the length of four standard episodes. So it has... Well, it has a plot. Um, of course, there's... Of course, there's Rocco with plot. Um, this is just the longest Rocco's plot that they've done. So that... As far as any negatives that I have, I guess that, that would be it. It feels a little wrong just because it has a plot. And that's not to speak ill of the plot itself. Um, I'll get into that in just a little bit. But, um, you know, one of the things that, you know, you worry about is the sense of humor of every, you know, the writers have changed. It's not going to feel the same. No, it, it still felt like Rocco. Okay. I mean, you got really, really big man and his nipples. Now, through the miracle of my amazing superpowers, let us move forward 20 years to the modern day through my nipples of the future. The choky chicken is back. Not the chewy chicken anymore, but... I can't believe this. Everything is so different. Back to Chokey Chicken, so we got that, and we got this whole joke about Spunky and Mops and 
basically internet porn and get away from that internet thing it'll hurt you you know stuff like that and it just it's Rocco it's Rocco but it's modern and uh speaking of you know new Rocco old Rocco um pretty much every Rocco character at least gets a cameo there might be an odd character or two that does not but I feel like there is a lot represented. And probably my favorite thing about this... Well, okay, no, my, not my favorite, but my second favorite thing about this episode. Um, so, in the 20 years that Rocco has been gone... Oh, Rocco's been gone for 20 years at the beginning of this. Um, Ed Big Hat has become successful. And he has a whole bunch of knickknacks in his office, one of which includes the Magic Meatball, which... I mean, that's just a classic episode. It's, that's, <laughs> that's Rocco at its best. How can you say that? Haven't I given you everything? Everything you've always wanted and more. <laughs> I have nothing left to give. Oh, I haven't watched that one in forever. I, I need to go, you know, I just need to buy the entire series. Okay, so, what is the plot? So... As I stated, Rocco has been in space with Filbert and Heifer for 20 years, and they are finally able to get back to Earth. And their coming to Earth inadvertently causes Ed Bighead to cause a financial crisis that endangers the whole town. The company's bankrupt, there's not a lot that they can do. So Rocco, Heifer, and Filbert get the idea that to say... Oh, Okay, I actually did forget one thing. Um, Rocco kind of, to keep his sanity, I guess, he's kind of really clinged on to the show The Fatheads, which he always enjoyed on the show, but I don't know, he seems a little obsessive here, but being 20 years in space and the only things you have to look forward to is Filbert and just being nauseous and Heifer singing bottles of beer on the wall the only thing he really had was his one tape of the fathead. So, you know, he kind of really got attached to that. <laughs> Isn't it great how something's never changed? My favorite show with my favorite friends. <laughs> oh, crikey. That was our only tape. Oh, no. You killed it. The show is no longer on air. That's been off the air for years now. <gasps> no? Fat heads? And he wants to bring it back. And this whole financial crisis thing, he sees that as the perfect opportunity to bring back the fat heads. He suggests, like, hey, let's go find Ralph, um, the big heads kid, and let's go get, you know, let's go get Ralph to make more fat heads so the company will get some kind of money. There's a huge audience out there clamoring for this show to come back. And whoever gives it to them is going to make millions. No, billions! Oh, Rocco, you're a genius! Ralph can make conglobo a new fathead special! It'll be a huge hit. It'll save my job, my house, and all of O-Town! So, Rocco, Filber, and Heifer, they search through the world to find Ralph, but are unable to do so until they come across somebody selling fathead ice creams. I almost said cones, but they're not cones. They're just those, you know, those crappy, like, Mutant Ninja Turtle ice cream bars that have the gumball eyes. Um, lo and behold, the person selling them is Ralph Bighead. But what's this? They're not Ralph anymore. They're now Rachel Bighead. I'm not Ralph anymore. I'm Rachel. Wow, cool! That is awesome! Well, what are we waiting for? Let's go! They bring Rachel back to make new fat heads, and Ed is not having a good time with his daughter's transition. Where's my son? I'm not your son, I'm your daughter. And I'm finally happy. No! Yes. No! Yes. 
I can't do this. I, 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 I have no daughter. My son made the show. No son, no show. There will be no fathead special. I quit. It seems like everybody else accepts her, except Ed. Um, but you know, eventually the cartoon gets made. It's some sappy parental kid bonding thing. Tickle Dicko, who's got little dad? Oh, 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 he's damaged my mental health. Oh, 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 oh. Ed and Rachel are getting along. It's the end. And if if that seemed a little rushed, that is actually my other big complaint about this special. The ending was a little rushed. Oh, um, I guess there's more to add. Um, the special does incredibly well and, you know, causes Kaglamo Corp or whatever it's called. Uh, Kaglamo Mart? No. But whatever. Um, they rebound. They're rich again. Um, this town saved. We get Rocco for the first time in 20 years. And the story that they wish to tackle is transgender identity. Damn, that takes some balls. And, you know, kudos to Joe Murray and the crew for just sticking by that. Because, wow. <laughs> They have definitely got some flack. Um, I'm going to talk about some of that in a bit. But, um, you know, you get people who, who loved this show growing up. And it's like, wow, we're going to watch the new Rocco's. Yay. And it's political. It's like, oh, my goodness. That is wonderful. Like, you're bringing these people in, not knowing what they're coming in for. And then just, bam, it's there. Hell, yeah. And now the show does a whole thing, like how Rocco's clinging to the fat heads and well, he was upset that, you know, that changed and he was unwilling to change and Ed Bighead is unwilling to change. So they talk about, you know, the big, besides, you know, transgender identity, the big focus of this is you got to embrace change. I mean, there is even a Winds of Change character and I mean, it's... <laughs> You know, it's one of those things, it, it, I don't want to say it's overly preachy, because no, it's not, and for something as silly as Rocco's Modern Life, I don't think there is such a thing as overly. And yeah, things change. It, it's kind of a little heavy-handed in there, I guess, but that is a fact of life. Things change, hopefully for the better, and in Rocco's, everything did change for the better. It seemed like Ed and Rachel have a somewhat decent, better relationship now. Um, Kaglamo Corp, uh, Mart, whatever it is. I Again, it's been way too long since I've really watched Rocco's. I watched this, but I don't <laughs> remember the company's name. Um, they're gone. They got launched into space. Same rocket that Rocco and all his friends were on. Um, yeah. Launched them into space. And... Well, the town whole got a whole bunch of money. And, I mean, you know, they don't have to deal with the, you know, capitalism of, again, whatever that company's name is, Kaglamo Corp. That, I know it's not Kaglamo Corp, but Kaglamo Mart sounds wrong because it's a big office building. Oh, hold on, I'm looking this up. It's just Kaglamo. I, you know... I guess I could see why I done goofed. But anyways, uh, they're no longer under the capitalistic tyranny of Kaglamo. And um, that's another political take that this seems to take a little bit. They maybe not wholeheartedly, but they at least poke a little fun at capitalism and some of its ideas. This is the fruit of capitalist redundancy. <laughs> so this does feel a little leftist. And with that in mind, let's go talk about some of the criticism now. So, as one can imagine, the trans story arc is 
Well, it's pissed some people off. I mean, they're the people that, you know, are okay to piss off because they suck, but it's pissed them off. And I keep seeing stuff like, oh, this is a kid show. They shouldn't be putting stuff in here like that. Um, kids generally seem to understand the concept of trans identities as long as they haven't been brainwashed at that point better than most adults do. Also, this whole thing about, oh, how dare they put this in a kid show? We realize we're watching Rocco, right? First and foremost, this is a show from 20 years ago. The main audience is going to be at least 20, or, you know, let's be realistic here, probably like 25 or more, because, you know, nobody knows, nobody remembers things from when they were zero. But, um, you know, there's obviously that. Uh, the main demographics are adults. And, um, it's a kid's show. Yes? But also, really, no. I mean, we have the Choky Chicken, which is, um... Well, it's a reference to masturbation. And, I mean, the very first thing we saw in this show was... Us being accosted by nipples. Male nipples, sure, which, um... For some reason aren't sexual, although female nipples are. Yeah, I don't get it. Um, and this whole mop thing. You know, okay. This has a fairly obvious reference to internet pornography, you know, with the spunky, you know, lusting after the mops and ordering a bunch of them and getting called a sicko for it. Or actually, Rocco gets called the sicko. But... That is an internet porn reference, and also, um, the mops would therefore be sex toys for Spunky. But the thing that people find inappropriate is that there's a transgender character. Let's let that sink in. And this whole thing that this is new for Rocco's, I mean, I'm not going to say that Rocco has ever been overly leftist or anything, but Conglomo is kind of... A stab at, you know, capitalism to at least an extent. And also, I think it was the last season of Rocco, but one of the later seasons of Rocco, either three or four, there was only four, right? I think there was. I think that's right. Um, had Ed Bighead uh, becoming a clown. Um, and the town hates clowns, so he has to live, you know in secret, hide the fact that he's a clown, all that, until, you know, he finds out his boss is a clown, and then everybody else finds out he's a clown, and everybody's like, eh, you're a clown, that's fine, we love you. Well, I've always liked... rainbows. <laughs> Rocco! <laughs> oh my! Um... Yeah, that was always an allegory for homosexuality. Uh, Joe, Mur Joe Murray has confirmed that that is indeed supposed to be with supposed to be an analogy to living as a closeted gay man, which I don't think he is. He's just socially conscious. So this isn't new for Rocco, not in the least. And <laughs> um, since we're just talking about um some of the bad takes people have from this. Let's talk about this one review I found real quick here, this Barbie person. Um, I'm, I'm not going to show their last name, even though you could probably find it. They say their kids didn't like it, but then that their kids aren't allowed to watch it. I mean, which is it? That your kids didn't like it or can't watch it? Because here... No, no, no. no these things are not necessarily mutually exclusive. You, you know, the parents cannot know what they're getting into, and then after finding out what it is, they're say, oh, no, that's not cool. I'm not going to let you watch it. Oh, but mom, mom, dad, oh, I want, you know, or mom and mom. Okay, let's be honest here. The parents were had a normative in this case. Um, that's not cool. I like this. But they said the kids don't like it. So why, why even say your kids can't watch it? If they don't like it, therefore implying they don't have any desire to watch it, then it just, it just seems a little weird, right? It, I mean, it doesn't really matter, but... Yeah, yeah. 
So, uh, Rocco's Modern Life Static Cling. Is it good? Yes. Does it feel true to old Rocco? Yes. Is it leftist? Yes. At least a little. I mean, I really don't think trans issues should be leftist. I think that should be at least center, but, you know, this is America. You know? I mean, I actually, I don't know because this is on YouTube. Anybody in the world can be seeing this, except maybe, you know, North Korea or something, but... I shouldn't assume I... Anyways, that's not my point. Um, thanks for watching this. This has just been a bit rambly. I just wanted to talk about um, Rocco's Modern Life Static Cling. And I did not script this video. Um, this is kind of impromptu. And sorry it hasn't... Sorry it's been like whew, almost three months since my last video. I wish there was a good reason that they haven't been coming out. Um... You know, I was going to say maybe writer's block, but no, I, I've written a script or two, and I just, I even recorded it, I just can't get around to editing it, and just, I don't know, it, burnout? I don't, I don't think it's burnout, but it's something, um, but yeah, this seemed like a good, you know, relatively quick video to make, although looking at my record time, just, geez, this is taking longer than I thought, um, yeah, but yeah, you know, it seemed like a good video to come back to, and, um, yeah, it's a little rambly, again, no script, and, you know, I'm high as shit, um, I mean, that's usually always true, but, or, for my videos, um, but it's different when you don't have a script, and don't really know what you're gonna say, I, I, I this one, I just winged it, um, but, yeah, Rocco, it's good, um, and I know I stopped doing call to action some time ago, but let's reinstate that because it's supposed to be good, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> no. All right. Uh, hey, thanks for watching, everyone. Um, if you like this one, like, comment, subscribe, and share. I'm... You know, I was going to say I'm not going to mention the bell icon because I personally don't click it. So don't click it. Just, just look in your subscriptions. But now that I've talked about it, it, the idea is there. So, you know, it's one of those things. But I, I, don't, I personally don't like the bell icon because as a creator, I like to get notifications of people commenting on my videos and stuff like that. And when I see something that um, a channel notification from the bell icon, it's like, oh, I got to No, I don't have a comment. It's just that, you know, Brutal Moose put out a new video, which... Okay, that is a good thing, but that's not what I'm looking for. But yeah, uh, take care, everyone. Bye-bye. <laughs>